Finally, the first list of the Bharatiya Janata Party for the state of Karnataka is out. 189 names have been announced in this first list. The BJP trying to do a generational shift or at least what now is being seen as the Gujarat model, bringing youth new faces as far as the elections are concerned. Now, this has triggered some sort of a rebellion or at least unrest, dissent as far as the party is concerned in the state of Karnataka, the only state in southern India which the BJP at this moment is in par uh, as far as the southern states are concerned. Now, uh, there are leaders, those who have been in the national capital, uh, trying to uh, meet the central leadership. Mr. Jagdish Shetha, one of the senior BJP leaders, six-time MP, former chief minister, had a long meeting with uh, Mr. J.P. Nadda, the party president. How will this rebel factor uh, impact the BJP's chances in the state of Karnataka? Joining me now, one of the prominent voices for the party now, young leader, member of parliament, Tejasvi Surya. Uh, Tejasvi, thank you for uh, talking to us here on NDTV. Uh, if I may start, Tejasvi, by asking you, uh, you know, it's very uncharacteristic of the Bharatiya Janata Party to come out with the list of the candidates so close to the nomination. I mean, it was almost seen that other parties used to struggle with their list and the BJP would be the first of the mark. Is the rebellion fear something that delayed this list? Not at all. Uh, there is no fear of uh, anything uh, uh, for the BJP, much less uh, the fear of any rebellion for a party that is cadre-based, the party that values cadre discipline so much. Uh, as you know that uh, the uh, uh, gazette of the election notification starts only on the 13th, that is tomorrow, and it's only thereafter that uh, uh, nomination process starts. So we are well in advance and more than 189 candidates uh, have been selected and the very process uh, of selecting these candidates is what uh, is uh, remarkable and which has also uh, definitely been time consuming. Uh, for the parties uh, like uh, JDS and Congress, which are largely dynasty and family based, it is easy to decide who should be a candidate because the most decisions, most of the decisions happen in a kitchen cabinet. But on the other hand, the Bharati Janta Party started its process about six, seven days ago, where the mm. very first exercise was to consult about 25,000 of our booth level, Shakti Kendra level workers took their opinions, which was followed by a district level meeting. Then a meeting was conducted by the state core committee. Right. Thereafter, for two full days, the central election committee sat and made some uh, suggestions and uh, uh, added new dimensions to the list. Finally, it met again uh, under the leadership of the prime minister, the parliamentary board met and thereafter, a few other changes were made and the list was announced. Okay. The whole process shows three things. The party is uh, has a robust internal democracy and a system which uh, um, is very sensitive to the opinions of even the smallest workers at the grassroots. Two, the process the party has undertaken has made space for new uh, fresh faces uh, uh, where more than 52 youngsters have gotten a chance, young people, fresh people, fresh faces have gotten a chance to come to politics. Right. Third, the list also uh, is indicative of the social uh, justice the party has done hmm. because all castes, including small castes which are numerically very insignificant in number, even those castes have found a political voice and a political leadership. Right. So whether it is a strong internal democratic process, making space for new leadership and grooving the leadership for tomorrow, and three, making social justice and bringing more professionals into politics, which is the need of today's politics for a 21st century India. All of these three are not only good for the party, okay. but are also so most is, importantly good for this India's is how, democracy. This is how you would like to, in fact, uh, send across the message or the spin on this. But let me ask you, sir. Uh, if it, the internal democracy and as you said, the, the opinion of the grassroots worker is also very important in the BJP. Why was then Mr. Shetter forced to in fact come out in open, make statements? He said that I will fight election no matter what happens, even if I have to fight as an independent. Why did he have to come to Delhi? Isn't this a sign that not everybody was on board when this list was released? Well, contrary to that, the fact that a senior leader uh, has uh, uh, access to uh, uh, put forth his opinions to the party's uh, central leadership, the party's central leadership being sensitive to uh, his uh, 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 position, and the fact that 
many other senior uh, leaders like B. S. Yadurappa ji himself, Shri K. S. Ishwarappa, Haradi Shrinivas Shetty have voluntarily made space for creating new leadership in their respective constituencies. All of these indicates a strong, robust democratic process and internal democracy in the party. Okay. Uh, Mr. Surya, you said that uh, you know 52 of the 189 candidates announced by the BJP are new faces, but sir, I can't hear you too well. There is some issue with this. Uh, okay, w what we'll try and do, call. we'll try and fix this audio. Am I audible right now? Is it better? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you said that uh, 52 of 189 candidates announced by the BJP are new faces, but the party in its first list of 189 candidates has included five sons or uh, uh, of sitting uh, or former MLAs, two wives of BJP legislators. Uh, there are people from same family, those who have been given ticket as far as the BJP is concerned. I'm talking about the Jerkioli family and a uh, few other examples. If you want, I can go through all those names. Then the party comes out and says that, uh, you know, you attack other political parties for dynastic uh, rule or having family-oriented uh, business. Isn't the BJP doing the same in Karnataka? Well, two things. First, the principle of one family, one ticket is uh, uh, upheld and is followed as much as is possible. And I, I would say in almost all the cases, one family, one rule. For example, uh, uh, take the case of Shikaripura, Yadurappa ji retired from electoral politics. It's only thereafter that his son has got an opportunity. The same is the case with, say, Anand Singh. He has retired. He has taken a step back. Therefore, his son has come forward. Hmm. Well, this is this whole rule of one family, one ticket is very religiously followed. The second aspect is that the party is not controlled by a single family. Right. Therefore, this is not a dynastic family, dynastic based party in that sense. Even while considering these uh, uh, sons or uh, children of these political leaders, the inputs of all the other people, inputs of the grassroots workers, inputs of the core committee, inputs of the state core committee, district core committee, everything has been taken care. Okay. Therefore, even these suggestions, these names have come only after following a robust internal democratic process. So when we talk about uh, Mr. Ramesh Kati and Mr. Nikhil Kati, those who have been given tickets from Chikudi and Hukari uh, constituencies, uh, you know, they are from the same family. You talk about Mr. Balachandra Jakhi Exceptions Jakhi cannot be the rule. Exceptions, exceptions cannot be the rule. Sir, but there are too Some many exceptions. exceptions. I'm saying that Mr. Balachandra of... Jarkioli, Ramesh Jarkioli, uh, you know, I can, are... I, I can go on. There are at least 12 uh, people from uh, those who have been given tickets, those who belong some way or the other to one family. Well, like I told you, it's uh, um, exceptions cannot be the rule. Ex these are one or two exceptions. The others that you are mentioning, like I told you, are uh, have been given only after the uh, father or the senior in the family has retired. Or we have tried to follow the principle of one family, okay. one ticket as much as is possible. And sure. we are the only party which is actually trying to bring all of these principles into India's democracy. Okay. And we are the ones who are now being asked as to why uh, you are trying to enforce this, why it has not been enforced 100%. Well, we are trying to enforce it 95%, 100% in all of the cases possible. Because, because this the is a principle party that does we hold take, dear to the does democracy take a moral position on this, starting from the Prime Minister. And that is one of course, constant attack of the BJP of on course, other political this is, leaders. This is the strength of the... Sure, this is what let, I'm let telling move you. On, on, on this is, the, Ankit, this is the strength of the Bharti Janta Party, which is why we... we, we we set these standards for ourselves and okay. we try to follow these standards as much as is uh, possible with the challenges of uh, the realities of the uh, pressures of the politics, Electoral uh, politics. Real I understand politics that. also. Right. And uh, credit must be given due that sure. this is a party which is trying to bring these uh, 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 new uh, uh, principles. These are the, this is the party which is trying to okay. um, make India's democracy more vibrant and truly uh, uh, democratic in that sense. Okay, let's just move on and uh, understand a little few, uh, you know, few more uh, details about the uh, ticket selection uh, of the BJP. Uh, to make the campaigning, and that seems to be the, at least uh, uh, the idea behind giving tickets to two senior BJP leaders, both Minister Mr. R. Ashok and Mr. V. Somanna, against the Congress heavyweights, uh, D.K. Shiv Kumar in Kanakpura constituency and Siddharamaya in Varuna constituency. If you were serious, or if the BJP was serious of making a tough contest, sir, uh, why have Mr. Ashoka and Somanna were fielded from 
you know, Padmanagar and Chamaraja constitu Chamaragar uh, constituency as well. Does this in a way not show by fielding them from two constituencies that the party knows what is going to happen to them when they fight against uh, Siddharamaya and DK Shivakumar? No, Ankit, on the other hand, this is the first time that leaders of the stature of R. Ashok and V. Somanna are contesting in constituencies where the BJP has been traditionally weak. Hmm. We are not shying away from taking the fight right inside the lion's den. Hmm. This shows how serious we are to defeat the Congress and the JDS even in their bastions. Hmm. From the last two months, the big news all across Karnataka, all of you have been following, is the desperate search of Mr. Siddharamaya for a safe seat. Okay. A former chief minister, a, a, a sitting MLA from a seat like Badami, he has been hopping seats. And after having considered Badami, later Kolar, later another seat, later Chamrajpet in Bangalore and then finally now going to Varuna which has been his home seat, his home bastion hmm. where the BJP is traditionally weak. Siddharamaya is literally running away from all these seats wherever the BJP has even a, a, a very slight presence. Okay. But even in Varuna, the BJP is very keen to defeat him in his own home, home, home ground is why the BJP has put one of its tallest leaders, okay. V. Somanna, to go and contest in Varuna. Uh, Which Mr. is the same uh, case with Kanakapura. Okay. See what has been the party's performance in Kanakapura. The BJP is not strong in these uh, regions. Which is why these uh, leaders uh, take refuge in only contesting in these places. The, by, by these leaders, I mean the Congress and the JDS leaders go and right. try to take refuge in only those pocket boroughs where the BJP has been traditionally weak. But this time the party has taken a call to challenge them even in those seats where the party is traditionally weak. Okay. Contrary to what you are uh, uh, inferring, the okay. BJP so is extremely it, keen on winning all the 224 seats. Therefore, sure, we are be, very confident both ways. of it's, putting up a very strong here. fight and I'm even winning I'm glad that you are here, in seats. fact, to answer these questions. May I also ask you, uh, was Mr. K.S. Ishwarappa, who was, uh, at least there were allegations of corruption against him, uh, uh, was that the reason the party wanted him not to contest and also make sure that some fresh faces do come in so that at least this whole anti-incumbency and the corruption issue could be dealt with? Ankit, Shri Ishwarappa ji is one of the senior most and very respected leaders of the Bharati Janta Party in Karnataka. These allegations of corruption that were made against him have not held water in any court of law. Therefore, the party nor the electorate considers these allegations seriously. Okay. However, Shri Ishwarappa ji, being one of the senior most uh, uh, karikartas of the party and having alongside Shri Edurappa ji and Shri Anand Kumar, literally built the party in Karnataka, Realize that it is very important for the party to uh, um, make space for new leadership, for the next generation leadership and has voluntarily come forward to give space his own seat uh, by uh, taking a step back from electoral politics. Okay. This is, a, this is a move that is worthy of emulation across all parties. Okay. Sometimes I feel, uh, Ankit, that the, because the BJP says that, you know, we want to uh, break dynasty and bring in democratic principles in party, we are asked when we make an exception owing to the realities of politics, if we make one exception, right. we have to answer all the questions. Here is a party where young uh, uh, leaders are being groomed. I am an example of it myself. Uh, uh, like me today, there are at least 16, 17 young people who have spent sure. 8 years, 9 years, 10 years working for the youth wing of the party organization and otherwise who have been given a chance to contest politics. Okay. How many of... Uh, uh, such uh, cases do you find in politics across the country? Okay. But when this happens, again, the question is raised to BJP and we are made to answer as to why our uh, senior leaders, were they, uh, uh, so uh, are, whether they voluntarily retired sure, I mean, or were they even made if you to are retire, trying whether to do they something new, there would, be, so, there would be questions, these are curiosities as well of the people, uh, you know, of the voters and the people of why these decisions are being taken and it's, uh, uh, it's legitimate to have these questions. But I want to ask correct. you because but my I was reading a report. Is, my I was but, reading but a report, sir, here, in, in some... Aniket, my point here is... Yeah. 
that the BJP is the only political party in India which, owing to the Prime Minister's vision and leadership, is trying to very systematically bring in internal democracy in political okay. parties to very actively groom professionals and young leadership for India's leadership, state leadership for today and tomorrow. And three, most importantly, trying to bring social representation across all sections of society okay. by giving political representation to all, howsoever significant the number of the I have three Maybe more these are things questions that must be to go, sir. And I, rather I, emulated by other parties. Sure. I have three more please, questions please, to go. Please. I will just start with, uh, uh, with, the, with some reports that I read uh, in local newspapers uh, of Karnataka. Uh, they have been reporting that Mr. K.S. Ishwarappa and Mr. V. Somanna are waiting for their sons to be accommodated in the second list of the party. And that's the reason why they are sitting quietly at this moment, not making too much noise as far as the ticket distribution is concerned. Are their sons going to be accommodated in the second list? Well, in so far as the case of uh, uh, Somanaji is concerned, Somanaji is himself contesting from Chamrajnagar and also from Varuna taking on Siddharamaya. He himself has gone on record and said that he is not asking for the ticket of his son uh, 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 because he wants to follow the party's principle of one family, one ticket. And Mr. Ishwarappa's son? Well, Ishwar Appaji has uh, uh, himself uh, given up the seat and taken a step back from electoral politics. The party leadership will take a call on what needs to be done in that seat. Okay. Mr. Tejasvi Surya, what will be the main issues uh, that will uh, dominate this election campaign in Karnataka? We've been hearing a lot about, uh, uh, you know, Amul, Nandini and uh, uh, many emotive issues being played out. For somebody who comes from a party where the party president says love jihad is more important, don't worry about the civic issues, which Mr. Yadurappa has himself said uh, that these are not the statements that should be made. Uh, what do you think is going to be the most important issue, the civic issues of the people or issues like love jihad? The BJP has always fought all elections on constitutional and developmental planks. In the same way, this election in Karnataka is going to be fought on the good work, the developmental work the BJP has done in the state of Karnataka for the last three and a half years. The double engine government led by Sri Narendra Modi ji at the center, as well as B.S. Yadurappa ji and Bommai in the state have solved legacy issues. Issues that were pending from 10 years, 20, 30 years, irrigation, public okay. transport, issues of caste and representation, reservations, all of these legacy issues have been put to rest and solved thanks to this double engine government. Therefore, one of the important planks of uh, going to the people, going to electorate is A, the development work done by the double engine government and of course, to the promise of what the BJP offers for the next five years for Karnataka. Karnataka, like you know, is one of the most progressive states in India. Sure. We are the state with the highest FDI the last five years consecutively, one of the highest tax paying states in the country, highest per capita uh, income among the large uh, states in the country, yes. highest in the uh, uh, innovation index, highest startups. We are the lowest when it comes to uh, uh, unemployment, especially among all the large states of southern India. Okay. It's a very progressive so, state. It's a growth engine of India. Therefore, so, if India has to very quickly meet the $5 trillion economy, Mark Karnataka should contribute $1 trillion economy. Therefore, that is the larger vision which we are presenting to the people of Karnataka. So this larger vision, I'm sure, would not have uh, any space for divisive politics or at least the statements which have been made by a few of your leaders like Mr. Nalin Katil. So love jihad. Uh, or uh, other issues possibly should be taking a back seat now. Is that what I'm supposed to read from what you said? Could you please repeat your question? I didn't hear you completely. I'm saying that so the vision that and the issues that you have said that the BJP is fighting the election on, they are not going to find any space for uh, issues and uh, you know things that like love jihad, which has been picked up by your party president, state president, Mr. Nalin Katil. See, by when we speak of development, when we speak of overall growth of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Karnataka's economy, the society of Karnataka, we must also consider that there are certain sections in Karnataka, certain geographies of Karnataka, where there are certain societal issues, which also as a responsible political party, the party needs to address. So whether uh, the, uh, politics is 
cannot be divorced completely from social cultural realities of a space hmm. it cannot only be restricted to uh, uh, pure economics the political party in every state in every country must also reflect okay. the cultural and social responsibilities and sensitivities of the region that the political party works in therefore in addition to this larger developmental vision if there are incidentally certain cultural and social issues that needs to be highlighted the party will try to raise voice within the framework of the indian constitution within the framework of the indian constitution the same uh, in fact uh, the, in, the government has in fact gone ahead on record and said that there is nothing as uh, love jihad on record which uh, possibly hopefully Uh, will be our term which uh, would be less used and the terms that you are speaking about progress growth development would be more of an issue as far as the state of karnataka is concerned tejasvi surya thank you so much for taking the time out and putting forward the views of your party